prayers, offerings, devotion. This is one image of India, a place of spirituality and tolerance. But another view is emerging, an intolerant nationalist politics is starting to take grip of the country amid a global trend of increasing right-wing nationalism, often at the expense of minorities. Hinduism and Hindutva is blood running in Indian veins. Hindu kabhi atangwadi nahi. Hindu ek chiti bhi hoti, sabje chodi chiti hoti hai. Chiti ko bhi pairs mein na dab jaye. Itna us sahijlu hota hai, itna udar hota hai, itna dayalu hota hai. Agar ek Hindu ko maarenge to sab ko ham bhi. At the center of the story is India's largest state, Uttar Pradesh, and the holy city of Ayodhya. Ayodhya is a place of pilgrimage, but in recent years it's also become a symbol of political and religious tensions. And this year in particular, with elections just a few weeks ahead, these tensions are being exploited by Hindu nationalist groups, including politicians from the BJP, India's uh, People's Party in English, who are currently seeking re-election with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Just arrived at a BJP rally, it's been really chaotic. Uh, the Home Minister, who's also the MP of Lucknow, has just arrived and earlier on a whole group of men charged at the security gates, broke down the security barriers and uh, came in screaming all hail leader. Who are the BJP and where did they come from? The BJP is part of a network of organizations that follows a militant Hindu nationalist ideology known as Hindutva. At the head of the network is the RSS, a paramilitary organization that promotes Hindu supremacy. The network includes a body for culture and education, a student group, NGOs, trade unions, and a political party. Today, the BJP under Narendra Modi are both populist and nationalist. Modi represents common man. Modi believes in one India, one nation. That's why we Indians believe in Modi. So our main motive is development, not any religion, not any caste. We don't have any barriers. Everyone is invited to our party and we invite everyone out. ये हमारा ये उपयोग था कि इसके हम लोग चाहते हैं कि सभी लोगों का सभी धर्मों का साथ है सारे लोग एक साथ मिल करके भारतीय जनता पार्टी के साथ करें इसलिए हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई चारों लोग और सभी लोगों का पूरा वो है Why would activists of the BJP a right wing nationalist group want to present this diverse inclusive image I asked Ashin Vinayak writer and social activist who is an expert on Hindu nationalism. I would put down to the very simple fact that they know you're from abroad. It's as simple as that. And they want to present an, uh, a conscious, not present an image, that everything is fine, this, that. It's part of the standard that you'll find even from non-BJP, how tolerant uh, Hinduism is. It wants to have a favorable international opinion uh, among the public and among governments. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has developed a global image of a free-trading, yoga-loving, humble statesman. He travels the world in traditional clothes, hands pressed together in front of his chest, making alliances with right-wing governments and trade deals with the others. But Modi's image hasn't always been so clean. Well, Modi was an RSS activist from youth, and he is lent by the RSS to the BJP, so he becomes the uh, chief minister uh, in Gujarat in the 90s. And uh, then, of course, you have the, the 2002 uh, pogrom against uh, Muslims, uh, which came around as a result of 
what happened in Godhra, where 57 Hindus died. And then, of course, riots began. And Modi made it very clear that let the Hindus vent their anger. And that carried on. And you had uh, a huge number of people uh, killed, around about 2,000, overwhelmingly Muslims. And uh, what happened after 2002, far from diminishing his uh, electoral appeal in Gujarat, made him even more popular. That popularity has continued. And in May 2019, Modi's BJP won the elections with an increased majority. And it's not just Modi. The militant Hindutva ideology is as popular as ever. नहीं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी भी आरएसएस से हैं गृह मंत्री जी भी आरएसएस से हम सब लोग भी आरएसएस की विचारधारा से रखते हैं आई एम नॉट अ मेंबर ऑफ आरएसएस बट आई एम नॉट अगेंस्ट द आरएसएस द आइडियोलॉजी व्हिच इज ब्रिंग आउट बाय द आरएसएस इज आल्सो नॉट अ बैड वन हिंदूइज्म रिप्रेजेंट्स लाइफस्टाइल ऑफ इंडिया हिंदूइज्म एंड हिंदुत्व इज ब्लड रनिंग इन इंडियन वेंस The influence of the BJP and its parent organization, the RSS, goes much deeper than just politics. The last five years has been a campaign for hegemonic control over India's culture, society and institutions. And here, the Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi, traditionally a bastion of left-wing and progressive intellectuals, students have been fighting constant attacks by RSS students, both verbally and physically. See, JNU is a university where we use education to fight our social oppression. When they understand how the system works, how capitalism and in India, casteism is excluding them, questions start. And now when this happens, no one in power likes us. What we represent is a true picture of this country. What they represent is hatred, bigotry, and if I have to put in one point blank, fascism. ABVP is the student wing of RSS. They were not so popular on campus five years ago, but once the BJP came into power, what it did, did not just in this university, it does this all over the country, is that it places members of RSS on positions of power. Like, there was a huge RSS rally that happened inside the campus, with people shouting, Hindu hegemony will be established. This is a poster of Shaheed Bhagat Singh, who is an Indian freedom fighter. He, uh, he fought against the British colonial rule, and along with that, he was an ardent uh, Marxist. So uh, Bhagat Singh has two documented post, uh, photos of him, photographs. One is of him inside the jail, and the other one is of him with a slanted hat. So now they have replaced that slanted hat with a saffron turban, and then they've put him all across the campus. Saffron is the color of uh, Hindu uh, ideology. The RSS dress code is khaki shorts and black, black uh, cap. Okay. The black cap comes from the Mussolini's dress. The brown shirts and shorts come from the Hitler's dress. So we call them... Uh, so it's a Mussolini, Hitler inspired yeah, outfit. It's, it's a combination of Mussolini and Hitler. <laughs> this has been specifically written in Golwakar's book. You'll have to read that book. In that book, M.S. Goldwalker, then leader of the RSS, expressed his support for Nazi ideology and called their treatment of Jews race pride at its highest. They were disgraced after refusing to take part in the movement against British colonialism. But today, the Hindutva ideology is stronger than ever. The RSS have millions of members and hold regular training camps for militants who are able to enforce the ideology with impunity. I'm lucky that I'm speaking to you now. After we won the election this time, the ABVP cadres with some RS, RSS people were drunk whole night and they were attacking whomever they found that they did not vote for them. Then the mob comes over me, they try to attack me, I sit in the police vehicle, then they surround the police vehicle, they stop the police vehicle, they assault me inside the car. 100 RSS people come into the police station. In that 100 R uh, more than 100 RSS people, there are two JNU professors of RSS. They threaten me, that they'll cut me into pieces, burn me alive, kill me.
It was the biggest mass movement since independence. And the difference between the nature of the mass movement of independence and this is that the mass movement of independence is connected to a genuine grievance, colonialism, the desire for independence. This is connected to a goal which is an artificially constructed goal about a demolition of a, uh, 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 of, a, of a supposed Ram temple some 500 years ago. Look at the irony of a situation in which when it was supposedly demolished, there was less of an uproar. Huh? Yeah. It's a constructed anger. These stones will be used to build a Hindu temple in Ayodhya where, according to legend, is where Lord Rama was born. But more recently, it was the location where Hindu nationalist groups destroyed a Mughal-era mosque. The resulting riots led to the deaths of thousands. And today, the dispute is still a sore point for many Muslims in this part of India, largely because the ruling BGP party and other Hindu nationalist groups are determined to build a temple on the remains of the mosque. वहाँ पर किसी प्रकार की मस्जिद नहीं थी मस्जिद में मीनारें होती हैं उस स्थान पर कोई मीनार नहीं थी उस मंदिर के सारे चिन्ह उसमें मंदिर के चिन्ह थे मस्जिद केवल लिख दिया गया था उस हम उस जीर्ण से ढांचे को हटाए हैं किसी मस्जिद को नहीं हटाए किसी मस्जिद को नहीं गिराए उस ढांचे को हटा हम मंदिर को बनाने का हमने प्रयास कर रहे हैं so you don't think that the building of the Ram Temple might inflame Muslim-Hindu relations? No, 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 no. No Muslim in India is opposing Ram Temple. I can challenge anyone. Ram Mandir बनने से जो हिंदू मुसलमानों में कोई मतभेद आएगा या सांप्रदायिकता फैलेगी ऐसा कुछ नहीं है ये केवल और केवल ऊपरी दिखाया जाता है कि हिंदू मुसलमान दूर-दूर बटे हुए हैं. Muslims and Hindus lived in relative harmony in India for over a thousand years, but rifts intensified during the British Empire, who saw Muslim-Hindu unity as a threat. In fact, historians say that it was the British that started rumors that the Babri Mosque in Ayodhya was built on top of a Ram Temple, planting the seeds of religious tensions which continue to this day. Yes, the whole world knows that there was a mosque, and the mosque was broken. And that situation is going on in the law. This is a very political issue. They want to take some of it from that. कि इसको बना करके या इसको इस मामले को जिंदा रख करके कुछ हिंदू मुस्लिम की दूरी पैदा की जाए। Muslims are among the poorest sections of Indian society. You cannot argue that Muslims are dominating over us. How do you create resentment against them? Playing the politics of historical revenge, generating fear. They are terrorists. Should we be that surprised uh, that this can have so much resonance? India is a Hindu country, but it's also a Muslim one. And estimates from 2018 say that there are more Muslims in India than there are in Pakistan. The 17th century mosque behind me is evidence of the long history of Muslims in this country. Uttar Pradesh alone has 44 million Muslims. That's more than the combined populations of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. And it's these Muslims that are on the sharp end of communal violence more than any other group. Several of Modi's allies in the BJP have faced accusations of stoking communal tensions. None more so than the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Adityanath, who we hope to get an interview with at the rally in Lucknow. We're marching with the rally now and there are hundreds of thousands of people here. Uh, we were hoping to speak to Yogi Adityanath, but he's actually been banned from speaking by the Electoral Commission. Uh, he can't speak to the press or in public because of hate speech. Yogi was gagged for referring to a Muslim party as a green virus and comparing the election to a battle of faiths rather than parties. Rajiv Yadav is a filmmaker and general secretary of advocacy organization Rihai Manch. For more than a decade, he has documented how Yogi's hate speech has incited violence. <laughs> Yogi 
कि अगर वह एक हिंदू बालिका को ले जाएंगे तो कम से कम सौ मुस्लिम बालिकाओं को हिंदू अगर एक हिंदू को मारेंगे देंगे तो सौ को हम भी सब एक धर्म युद्ध की तैयारी कर रहे हैं हिंदू अलग संस्कृति है मुस्लिम अलग संस्कृति है दोनों एक साथ नहीं रह सकती दो संस्कृतियां कभी एक साथ नहीं रह सकती हैं। ये टकराव होगा जरूर होगा आक्रामकता के साथ अपनी कार्रवाई को अंजाम दे सके इसलिए हम लोगों ने हिंदुआ वाहिनी का गठन किया है हिंदुआ वाहिनी योगी की जो है एक ऑगेशन था योगी का देखिए क्या हुआ कि जब 2005 में मऊ में दंगे हो गए और मऊ में दंगों में जब आया कि हिंदू या वाहिनी का रोल है उस रोल को समझने के लिए हम जब समझने लगे वो अपने आप में एक भयावह दंगा था उसमें एकदम गुजरात पैटर्न पे हुआ था माँ बेटी के साथ बलात्कार हुआ था लोगों को टुकड़े टुकड़े काट करके जला दिया गया था की सीमाएं समाप्त तो हो चुकी हैं। अगर कोई हिंदुओं के घरों और दुकानों में आग लगाता है तो मैं नहीं मानता हूं कि आपको इन सब कृत्यों को करने इस प्रकार के कृत्य करने से कोई रोकता है उसके बाद गोरखपुर बस्ती मंडल में बड़े स्तर पे दंगे भड़के कम्युनल वायलेंस if it means religious tensions and religious violence they have existed but in modern times they get much more deepened and sharpened because right. identities get sharpened and deepened in many ways so anti muslimness is foundational to the ideology of uh, hindu nationalism what has happened now since 2014 is very very disturbing because what you now having is a kind of normalization this kind of violence against muslims in particular is you have the people doing this in, very confident that they will go on punished Uttar Pradesh where many of these videos were taken has seen more communal violence than any other state Hindutva groups like Barjang Dal who play the role of morality police in India are regularly implicated यहाँ पर मुसलमानों को जो है धार्मिक उदाढ़ी रखता है टोपी रखता है वो बुरका पहनती हिजाब पहनता है वो ये खाता है वो खाता है उसके नाम पर उसको मारा जाता है जी यहाँ जो है यहाँ क्या पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में गाय के नाम पे लोगों को मारा जा रहा है पीटा जा रहा है और कहीं भी कोई गाय जानवर कोई लेके जा रहा है तो उसको ज़बरदस्ती जो है उसके जानवर छीन ले लिए जा रहे हैं उसको मार के पुलिस के हवाले कर दिया जा रहा है मोदी वॉज बैंड बाई द यू एस आफ्टर द गुजरात रॉयट्स टूडे They welcome him with open arms, keen to tap into India's 1.3 billion person market. And in return, the Indian state borrows the US's war on terror tactics to justify its suppression of Muslims. Everybody uses the term Islamic terrorism and jihad now. Have you ever heard of Christianic terrorism, Hinduistic terrorism, uh, Judaic terrorism? But when you say Islamic terrorism, you're linking it to a religion. and that's something that's very very dangerous and dishonest the discourse of terrorism is used to justify to claim that your enemies are the terrorists and to hide the terrorism that you carry out ya galat prachar hua hai galat tarike se waha jo hai samaj mein prasarit hua hai jaise aaj hindu ko aatankvadi ke roop mein prasarit hua hindu kabhi aatankvadi nahi hindu ek cheeti bhi hoti sabse choti cheeti hoti hai चीटी को भी पैर से में न दब जाए इतना उसके सहिष्णु होता है इतना उदार होता है इतना दयालु होता है आई थिंक राइट नाउ इज अ टाइम एंड वन शुड बिलीव इन इंटरनेशनल सॉलिडारिटी एंड कम टूगेदर टू फाइट फासिज्म लॉट ऑफ अटैक्स एंड लिंच आर हैपनिंग ऑन द मुस्लिम एंड द दलित कम्युनिटी बट नो वन इज विलिंग टू यू नो कम इन टर्म्स विद द फैक्ट एंड देर लाइक नो मुस्लिम आर फाइन दलित आर फाइन बट देन इट कैन लीड टू एन इवन जेनेसाइडल फेज 
But far-right populism and the persecution of Muslims isn't exclusive to India. It is a global problem. The RSS BJP strength is that it has a transformative project for India. You have to counter it with an alternative transformative project, which cannot simply be this kind of existing neoliberal capitalism. Recognize Modi for who he is. Recognize the RSS for what it is. In other words, I don't separate the struggle against communalism from the wider struggle for a much more transformative project. India today is a country that seems trapped between a problematic caste system, neoliberal capitalism, and a mix of ancient traditions and religions. Here in Ayodhya, Indians continue to come to the banks of the Sarayu River, as they have done for centuries, immersing themselves in these waters to wash away their sins. This tradition has outlived empires, despots, politicians, and ideologues. And, as sure as this will continue for centuries more, so too will the tradition of resistance to colonization, hatred, and oppression in all its forms. Mm -hmm.